Hi everybody, this is Mr. Katziv talking about 2.6 and the powers and limits of the president. Here are your objectives for the day. As always, make sure you take good notes and here we go. So in order to think about the executive branch, we got to think about just the basics of what that executive branch does and what the president does. The president is there to enforce or execute laws. So they're the ones that have that backing of the law and make sure that it's enforced. The legislative branch are the ones that create the laws and the judicial branch are the ones that interpret laws. But the president carries out the laws. As the president, there are certain other people that fall under him or her. So you've got agencies that assist in making these decisions, the actual military, since the president is the commander in chief, and then diplomats that represent the United States and speak on behalf of the president. So one of the biggest powers that the president has is this idea of, an, of appointing uh, power, appointing certain agency leaders. And so whenever you look at the Department of Education, the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Homeland Security, somebody is in that position to run that agency, the president has appointed him or her. You also have what is known as an executive order. These are these are policies that the president have put it out, out there to kind of help organize the way that they're going to run their their executive uh, power, and it has the force of law. It's what the president wants to happen, and, and they're sort of like they are sort of like a, a, a law. They have the force of law, and we can see that throughout, presidents have put out there as executive orders, and so has Trump. So we have legis the legislative powers too, and one of those is a veto power. So anytime a bill is passed by the House and the Senate, it's got to be put on the president's desk. The president can then say veto, they can veto that law, they veto that bill, say I do not want that bill to become a law, and it's going to have to go back to the Congress. Uh, another thing the president has to do is prepare and submit a budget once a year to Congress. Congress doesn't have to do anything with that budget, but it's the president's job to at least submit a budget once a year. Finally, the president has this thing known as the State of the Union Address. It's a big deal where it happens once a year where the president speaks in front of the entire Congress on just how the United States is doing at that present moment, a look into the future as well. The president has diplomatic powers. One of those is to negotiate uh, with foreign leaders and diplomats and just speak on behalf of the United States. Uh, the other thing that the president can do is have this recognition power. So the president can recognize certain countries as legitimate or not legitimate. We have a country that's a state sponsor of terror and that has maybe done some bad deals with the United States in the past. The United States can technically not recognize that country and so it doesn't hurt, it really hurts their economy. It hurts that country's um, you know, now grant uh, their their position on the grand stage. But the other side of that argument is that Israel. We, we the United States was the first country to recognize Israel when they actually became a country. So it has positives and negatives as well. Uh, last thing that a president can do is have an appointment power. So they appoint ambassadors who can go to different countries and represent the United States. So the president is also the commander in chief of the military. They're the ones who are going to be the, the top person in the military, whether they have military experience or not. And Barack Obama certainly did not have mili prior military experience. They're the ones that are going to control the nuclear weapons for the United States. They have a ton of power when it comes to being the commander in chief. Uh, but they also appoint certain officers that are in charge of the, uh, the Navy, the Army, the Marines, who really make the decisions because those officers hopefully have more pri more military experience than the president. But there certainly have been presidents who had military experience, like uh, George Herbert Walker Bush. So you also have the president putting their hand and wearing multiple hats, but this hat would be for judicial powers as well. So the president appoints federal judges, and the president also appoints Supreme Court judges. And you can see that on the right with Trump's newly appointed Supreme Court judge, Neil Gorsuch. Uh, the president also can pardon certain individuals throughout their presidency. Normally, a president will save this towards the end of their presidency once another president has been elected to replace him or her. But this pardon power allows the president to 
give more mercy for somebody who's committed a crime, they're going to take that crime off that person's record and have them not serve in jail any longer. And so there are also limits on the president. When we started our country and the Constitution was founded, we wanted a, an executive, we wanted a president, but we, wanted, we didn't want them to be all too powerful because that was going to remind us a lot of having a monarchy or a king. So reading these limits, make sure you write these down and you ask questions in class if some are confusing. So hope you took good notes and we'll see you tomorrow.